Hello everybody, welcome to my review of One Piece Chapter 1016. This is Otama, but I think it should be entitled either Cat Burglar or Yamato for the win, because both those girls stepped it up big time. I would lean more towards Yamato of Anami, just because of, number one, Yamato standing on the ground against Kaido, and number two, just because of the circumstances surrounding Nami and Ulti. Start off with the cover page with Zoro, with a Shinobi cat, which... This scene actually looks like a reference to Nami and Shinobu back in Act 2 when they were in the attic avoiding blades and Nami meowing like a cat to avoid being detected. So that's a cool little reference. A nod to Nami in this chapter. And you got plus you got Zoro performing ninjutsu, or at least attempted to, before trying to avoid it being stabbed with the sword. So that's pretty cool. It's just typical Zoro humor cover page. We start off the chapter with the continuation of the of the fire festival with the citizens of the flower capital mourning the dead and this is a, this is a really heartwarming scene because of obviously number one you you literally unbeknownst to them you just literally had a quote unquote death we don't really know for sure obviously some parallels between the way that Kazuki Odin died and the way that technically Kinemon died we, presumably they were killed in silhouette so we'll have to wait and see but we start off, so we got Hitetsu and Otoko wandering through the fire festival. It's a really hot woman. Obviously, Hitetsu, the guardian of Atama, which I'm assuming she lost her parents and family due to her village being burnt down. It's just a messed up situation. And when you consider the fact that Toko and Otama, outside of Momonosuke, are two of the most focused children in Wano right now. And Ot Otoko literally lost her dad, father in the, pre in the previous act. So, yeah, it's just a... It's a cool, it's, it's a heartwarming moment with Hitetsu and Otoko there. And even though the flower capital needs to be saved because of unbeknownst to them, a floating island is approaching them. Everybody's under the assumption that Luffy is going to make his way to the flower capital now he's under sea and with the heart parts. But the way this chapter plays itself out, I'm not so sure. But I'll, I'll go into my reasons as to why. We go to Onigashima, continue to fly in the sky. We see Cypher Paul, and they're still bringing up the numbers about how well they did outnumber Luffy's boys. Luffy got taken out, so now this is back. It's a back and forth. It's like the details that come out literally shift the momentum in in the side of each side when something else happens, which is true because two chapters ago Luffy was KO'd and take and knocked on the sea. In this chapter, a member of the Toby Rover was knocked out, quote unquote. So that's a huge loss in their in their ranks. So, so we start that frog eavesdropping, and we have Bao Hong who actually comes up with the idea of adding more fuel to the fire. But after announcing Luffy was defeated, oh, I'm going to announce Momonosuke actually has been killed, which would really demoralize most of the members of the Resistance, with the exception of the Straw Hats and most of the Supernova. Because I think they would see through the BS. So. If we get to see Nami and Usopp, they're running through. They sit on the same floor. They're with Atama trying to make exposition. We actually get some exposition on how Zeus managed to survive, being devoured by Hera. And it's because when Nami used the black balls to like give them as a parting gift, quote unquote, Zeus, before he lost his old body, he devoured them and then awoke inside it with it within the climb attack. It's, it literally turns into a black ball. Pretty much. But I do like this uh, modification in Nami's weapon now, which is pretty cool. So, this is actually a funny scene where Nami's like, she's like, oh, I didn't sign up for any of this, but it's like she can't really do anything about it. Because literally, Zeus is attached to a weapon now, so unless she could detach it somehow, which I don't think she can, then she's kind of stuck with Zeus from here on out. Which probably means she's going to get another power up, which I'm, I'm assuming she got in this fight, but I think she's. She wasn't able to control it, so Nami's gonna have to get. The second part of this funny scene is where Zeus is like, "Oh, you're you're still angry at me. You haven't forgiven me, so, but I can't leave without Mama's powers." Which is interesting because how is Zeus gonna get Mama's power without actually? They would have to take her out, which I don't see happening unless Law could do something with this team up with the kid, maybe. Anyway, they spot Bao Hong, and before Bao Hong can make the announcement that Momonosuke has been taken, has been ki killed, Usopp tries to fire 
but out of nowhere and props to shout out to ulti you knew i thought she was gonna get back up i was hoping she was gonna get back up but even though i knew what the end result was gonna be because of the situation but still props to ulti for actually speed blitz in usopp the way she, way she did and actually just not taking them down and then grabbing the time at the same time now you guys know how i feel about that but ulti is blaming the time of what happened to page one so nami tries to attack and actually it does n nothing because well it's actually cool what she what zeus does because zeus actually transforms the ball and spike and then sm slams into ulti's face but he doesn't do anything because of a hard skin i thought that was pretty cool like the end of Nami's weapon climb attack can like alter now so she has a ball and spike which is pretty cool with a crazy attack there but Nami says no because all time is in the way Usopp shout out to him because he actually comes up with a pretty good idea green star Sasago to like separate the two so Nami can get the, get the attack in on ulti then Zeus fires off and then actually attacks Blasts ulti and actually takes her out on KO's there. So Nami takes out ulti via Big Mom. And actually, Bao Hung actually then but blurts this out. So that you got members of the Toby Rogue listening in. You got Sasaki, Who's Who. Like, they're puzzled by this. You also get Black Mario, which is pretty cool because we, we haven't seen her since she was slapped by Robin. So that was pretty cool. Also, I'm glad we haven't seen too much. Like, we get to see panels of Robin and Black Mario here and there. We haven't seen the fight, so I'm glad because it doesn't get we don't cut back and forth. Like I want this to be fully focused. I said that before. Atama can make a message and get it through to the rest of the pleasures and the gifters, so that's pretty cool. Atama's like, this is Atama about to give the orders. You actually get a, a panel. You actually get the panel with Queen, and there's a small panel with Sanji. Is obviously flat fighting Queen, but it's pretty vague. Then we get to see what happens in that fight. We don't know where we don't know where Zoro is right now. He's probably being patched up by a chopper. We go to the top of the skull though, where the main event is happening with Kaido in Dragon Form, and the fact that Kaido decided to go from his Dragon Form into his Hybrid Form, and there's obviously a chunk of this sec this scene that was cut out because the last time we saw Kaido in Yamato, Kaido was in his Oni Form, so they obviously had a clash or something happened to where. I have a Kaido was dicking around and he's to I don't like a chances, but again, this really isn't about power scale and this is about a, a huge opportunity for character development, especially with what she says here. So, so Kaido's like Straw Hat and Odin's brat are already dead. If you're going to play, you should learn to protect your pieces. I honestly didn't think Kaido would care if, if Yamato would leave. Because I didn't think Kaido would care about stuff like that. But obviously the more we learn about his flashback, Kaido. So and Yamato's like, that's right. I'm going to set go to sail the seas with Luffy after I drive you out of Wano. Kaido. So the fact that, number one, she's gone whole about wanting to be to join Luffy and set sail, which is Odin's dream. This is where, what I said at the beginning of the chapter, where I think Luffy's going to go to... the to the top of the school dome again instead of the flower capital i know that's the prediction that a lot of people have like because of how much time is left but i'm gonna bring up again i'm gonna bring up why it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because and then the is like i'm gonna drive you out of one of kaido and then kaido's like whoa, 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 whoa it's not set it's not like i set off or anywhere else yamato i've take i've been staying he, here on one because it's special now the fact that Kaido calls one a special, this would be a perfect opportunity to like spill into the flashback. Maybe we will because we're on break next week. And Yamato already knows like there's no way. I know I already know I'm not gonna beat you. I'm just going to hold you up. And Kaido's like, don't expect me to go easy on you. They obviously have a hockey clash because you see the sparks, and that's where the chapter ends. So again, mad shout out to Yamato for standing on the ground against Kaido. But the fact that Yamato says, I'm going to hold you off until Luffy gets here. There's no point in Yamato stating that or doing that unless, in a sense, I think Luffy's going to go back to the top of the skull. And I think Momonosuke is going to be the key to getting him back up there. Just because, number one, Momonosuke and Shinobu, they decayed on the ground. We don't know where they went. But 
Marmoloske was the one to pass on the message from Luffy, Submarine of the Heart Pirates. That would make the most sense, and, Mo and Marmoloske could get over a fear of flying and actually fly Luffy back up to the Skull Dome with whatever happens with between Yamato and Kaido, where Luffy comes back in where, before Yamato gets KO'd or before she gets killed, whatever. But that's the that's where I see Oda go with this because it doesn't make a lot of sense for Yamato to stall up there if yeah if Luffy was just gonna go straight to the flower cap. I go with Yamato as the MVP of this chapter just because of, because number one Yamato is in, is wrecked herself and she's trying to hold her own against Kaido. She knows she can't win, but she is at least trying to buy time. So and Kaido's in his hybrid form, so this isn't gonna go well. But if nothing else, it's probably going to lead us into a flashback sooner rather than later. We'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you guys think down below. So that's going to do it for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Like the review if you did. Have a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Subscribe to for One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.